This is a quick video for Active Transport. Active Transport. And all that means is to carry across actively. So if we had some random molecules just floating around, so I'll just draw some random molecules. And I'm going to have them actually at a concentration difference where the top has a higher concentration of them and the bottom has a few, just a few dispersed ones around. Now our protein that's going to allow it to, be, to go across will be right here. I guess I can draw a little circle. And for active transport to take place, we need actually two things. We need the molecule to be able to go across, and we need an energy source. And our energy source is going to be ATP. So when we have a molecule that touches this, ATP will be consumed, and it will be turned into AMP. And it will cross. So now our molecule will have crossed the membrane. And it will have gone from a low concentration to a high concentration. And with active transport, almost always you're going from a, a low concentration to a high concentration. There are some cases where it's not that, but almost always you're going from a low to a high concentration. That is active transport. And another way of thinking this, thinking about this is, let's say we have an escalator. So here is a poorly drawn escalator, but we have our little blue molecule wanting to get across right here. Now it might just accidentally bump into the escalator. It's not going there on purpose, it just randomly bounces into it. Once it bounces into it, the escalator, the, the, this is, we're going to call it our protein, but the escalator notices it and it turns on. It consumes ATP and makes AMP. And now our little molecule just climbs right up it. It doesn't really, it can't go down it, it's just going to go up with the escalator. So now it's gone from a low concentration to a high concentration. Where this is low and this is high. That is active transport in a, in a nutshell for the most part. The next part we want to talk about is facilitated transport. Facilitated transport. facilitated transport. And that is when you have molecules go from a high concentration to a low concentration. So we'll draw another another protein that is a transporter and it will allow our molecule from a high transport, high concentration to a low concentration. We can kind of think of this as, as a slide. So this will be our high concentration. Concentration. And it allows the molecule to slide down low. Concentration. So that's our low concentration. Or right there, low concentration. So our molecule will be at the top where it's at the higher concentration. And it will just slide right down to the bottom. Notice that our transporter, i.e. the slide, did nothing. It consumed no energy. It just let it down. It just let it f just slide right down. It had no energy. The reason that it happens is because of a concentration difference. And the reason concentration difference, concentration gradients occur is because of active transporters. Usually, unless you spill something into a cell, but we won't mess with it. What causes concentration gradients to occur are active transporters. Facilitated transporters decrease the concentration gradient. They allow molecules down. So if we let keep, this one just kept letting them through, they would the, this they would become equal. There'd be equal number of molecules on both sides, where the active transport just wants to get them from the low to the high concentration as long as there's ATP available and some other signaling devices, but that's nothing too major to worry about. 
Now there's another type of transporters. They're called semporters and antiporters. They're just co-transporters. And now we actually need two molecules, and I guess I'll do the second one in white. So we'll have a few white ones up here. Or actually, we'll have a lot of white ones up here. And we're going to talk about an antiporter. So now we have our few white molecules down at the bottom, and a lot of white ones at the top. Now with our antiporter, which we're now going to call this sucker, so I guess I'll actually erase this, and put back a new protein. So we have our new protein, and it's going to be a co-transporter. With this, you need the... You need one molecule going across the sim port, while another one goes across as well. Now this is actually called a secondary active transport. Secondary active transport. Now it doesn't require ATP, it requires the act of what ATP has done. ATP has brought up all these molecules. So now they're at this high concentration and they want to get down. Well, depending on the concentration of these two different types of molecules, if the blue wants to get down more than the white does, it will actually, in a antiporter, which I guess I should say antiporter, port, and an antiport, it has, the only way this blue molecule can get across is down is if a white molecule will come up. So you can think of it as as if there was like some type of rope right here. So draw in a different color. We had a rope right on the slide, and as the blue one went down, it pulled the rope, and the rope was attached to a white one. So it's using the energy that when you slide down a slide, to pull up another molecule. Now this would only occur if the concentration of the blue one is much higher than the white one. If the white one has to go up even higher than the blue one, this will not happen. So that is kind of like a, uh, that is what a the basic antiporter is. Or you can think of it as uh, a, oh let's say a we have two floors, so our first floor and our second floor. And we have our molecules. Our blue one right here. It's going to jump down to the lower concentration. While we have our white one down here. And we'll have some type of pulley where the white one is pulled up as the blue one falls down. So this goes down, this goes up. So that is what secondary active transport is. Energy isn't being consumed. It's just maybe a big guy falling down, pulling up a little guy. So that is what active transport is, facilitated transport, and co-transporters. They are secondary active transporters. And I, I hope that... Oh, I guess I could also talk about semporters really, really quickly. Semporters is when they're just on the same side, but they're both going down, but there's still a one's going from a high concentration to a low concentration, while the other one's going from a low concentration to a high concentration. I may have just said that backwards. It just means they're going down they're not going down together, but they're crossing the membrane together, but one's going from a high concentration to a low concentration. And I might actually make another video explaining semport, but it's the same concept of active transport. You need one molecule to cross to pull the other one across. So that is active, secondary, and facilitated transport in a very broad sense.